Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Old Testament. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll be using for the text the Joseph Smith translation of the Old Testament, along with many commentaries from general authorities of the Church, BYU professors, Bible scholars, and others. This format will be very detailed, and so if you want a deep analysis of the Old Testament, you come to the right place. Thanks for your attendance. Hi there, and welcome back. This will be for 1 Kings chapter 8. So we're getting the temple pretty much completed here. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers, or princes, or leaders of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the, mount, in the month Elen, Eth, Ethanim, which is the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the ark. And they brought up the ark of the Lord in the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, even those did the priests and the Levites bring up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be told nor numbered for multitude. And the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto, unto his place, into the oracle of the house, to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubim spread forth their two wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves, that the ends of the staves were seen only in the holy place before the oracle, and they were not seen without, and there were, and there they are unto this day. Well, they're not there today, but there was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone, which Moses put there at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel, when they came out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, that the cloud filled the house of the Lord. Before Solomon gave the dedicatory prayer, a cloud of glory filled the house of God, indicating the very presence of God. That this glory should accompany the dedication exercises is interesting for Latter-day Saints, since a similar glory attended the dedication of the Kirtland Temple on the 27th of March, 1836. Many present reported seeing angels and hearing the sound of a rushing mighty wind which filled the temple, and many in the community reported seeing a bright light like a pillar of fire resting upon the temple. The special events attending the dedication of both temples are signs of the Lord's divine acceptance of the house built in his name to his honor. Wouldn't you think that if you were a non-member and you saw a um, pillar of light upon the Mormon's temple, you would think that that would be the true church anyway, I, I dig that. Verse 11, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the Lord of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Then spake Solomon, the Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. I have surely built thee a house to dwell in, a settled place for thee to abide in forever. And the king turned his face about and blessed all the congregation of Israel, and all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spoke, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and hath with his hand fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house that my name might be therein, but I chose David to be over my people Israel. And it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David my father, Whereas it was in thine heart to build a house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. Nevertheless, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son shall come forth, out of thy loins he shall build the house unto my name. And the Lord hath performed his work that he spake, and I am risen up in the room of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised, and have built a house, have built a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And I have set there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath, who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all, thy, with all their heart, who has kept with thy servant David my father that thou promised, promised him, thou, spake, thou spakest also with thy mouth and hast fulfilled it with thine hand as it is this day. Therefore now the Lord God of Israel keep with thy servant David my father that thou promised him, saying, there shall, there shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel. So, if only, uh, that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me, 
And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou speak, spakest unto thy servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have builded. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry of and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today, that thine, that thine eyes may be, may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place and hearken you hearken thou to the supplication of this of thy servant and of thy people israel when they shall pray toward this place and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and when thou hearest forgive if any man tra trespass against his neighbor and an oath be laid upon him or he require an oath of him to cause him to swear and the oath come before thine altar in this house then hear thou in heaven and do and judge thy servants condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness when thy people israel be smitten down with before the enemy because they have sinned against thee and shall turn again to thee and confess thy name and pray and make supplication unto thee in this in this house then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people israel and bring them again unto the unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers when heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou afflictest them then hear thou in in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people israel that thou teach them the good way wherein they shall they should walk and give rain upon the, thy land which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance this uh, dedicatory prayer is very similar to the dedicatory prayer of the Kirtland temple remember too that the prayers dedicatory prayers are written down uh, and so this may have been written by Solomon, and his prayer becomes the pattern for all temple dedication prayers. If there, this is 37, if there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, in the, Sep, in the Septuagint it says any of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man, or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward this house then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways whose heart thou knowest for thou even thou only knowest the hearts of all the children of men that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers moreover concerning a stranger that is not of thy people israel but cometh out of, of a far country for thy name's sake israel uh, a far country from israel would be united states for they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand and of thy stretched out arm when he shall come and pray toward this house hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for that all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee as do thy people israel and that they may know that this house which i have builded is called by thy name as part of his dedicatory prayer solomon referred to a stranger who comes from a far country comes in the name of the lord prays toward the house of the lord asks the Lord for certain blessings upon Israel, which Solomon asks the Lord to give heed. That was from the Institute. Verse 44, If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house that I have built for, that, for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication to maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet if they shall bethink themselves, or consider it in their heart, in, in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned, and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart, and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayers and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee in all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they be thy people in thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt, from the midst of the furnace of iron, that thine eyes may be upon may be open unto the supplication of thy servant, 
and unto the supplication of thy people Israel to hearken unto them in all that they call for, for unto thee. In the peace of these lovely temples, sometimes we find solutions to the serious problems of life. Under the influence of the Spirit, sometimes pure knowledge flows to us there. Temples are places of personal revelation. When I have been weighed down by a problem or a difficulty, I have gone to the house of the Lord with a prayer in my heart for answers. These answers have come in clear and unmistakable ways. That was by President Benson. Verse 53, For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth to be thine inheritance, as thou spakest by the hand of Moses thy servant, when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised that hath not failed one word of all his good, his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. And the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us that he may include our, our, incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments which he commanded our fathers. And let these my words wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times as the matter shall require that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Let your heart, therefore, be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at that day. And the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifices before the Lord. And Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered unto the Lord, two and twenty thousand oxen and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. And the same day did the king hallow the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings and meat offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar that was before the Lord was too little to receive the burnt offerings and meat offerings and the fat of the peace offerings. And at that time Solomon held a feast and all Israel with him, a great congregation from the entering or approaching or entrance in of Hamath, unto the river of Egypt before the, before the Lord our God, seven days and seven days, even 14 days. In his vision of the end of days, the prophet Zechariah foretells that all the nations of the world will assemble for the festival of Sukkoth in Jerusalem to worship God. And that was out of the Encyclopedia Judaica Jr. Verse 66, on the eighth day, he sent the people away and they blessed the king and went unto their tents, joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had done for David, his servant, and for Israel, his people. That's the end of the chapter. We've just, just had the Temple of Solomon dedicated, and you can see that there's a lot of similarities between the dedication of the Kirtland Temple and the dedication of Solomon's Temple. So that's the end of chapter eight. We'll see you next time. Bye.